Jalen Brunson, 8.3 to go. Great jumper to tie it at 103. But, 0.3 to go. Brunson called for a foul on Aaron Holiday, who hit two of three free throws. Brunson and Coach Tom Thibodeau can't believe it. Questionable call at best. And the Rockets beat the Knicks tonight, 105 to 103. Heartbreak for sure from our Delta MSG studios. Bill Pete along with Alan Hahn. Wally Zerbiak will join us here momentarily. So the, no, the Knicks, 14 down at the half. Fight back repeatedly, tie in the third quarter, tie in the fourth quarter, and lose. Heartbreaking way to lose. And we're sitting here talking about it. Everyone has watched the games talking about it. Why make that foul call? Yeah, especially when you see that there's contact from both players. We're not denying the contact. There's definitely contact there, and there's definitely time. But watch Holiday's left arm. He also pushes off. Lower hand of Brunson, upper arm of Holiday. That's a veteran official, and Jason Goebel has been in the league enough. You don't, like Both guys make contact here. There is no call. Like Anybody else would just go to overtime, boys. Let's go. Right? That's all that is. It's a contest. It's an aggressive contest. We're at a buzzer. Move on. Technically, if you want to go down to the technicality of the contact, what Brunson does, make contact with his upper hand, with lower hand, actually. His hand's down here, and Holiday's up, bracing himself, pushing off. It's just there is contact. So you cannot deny that there was a foul to be called there. The question, of course, from the Knicks' perspective is why? Why on that play, a chuck and duck at the buzzer three, is that necessary to call with a game like this? But it's called. And if you're Tom Thibodeau, why you're angry is not just on that particular play. Why you're angry is because when you look at the box score, you see your team scored 58 points in the paint, which is more than what the Rockets did in the paint. You were going into the paint and you were scoring. You took 12 free throws in that game. You take twice as many per game. You're tied with the Rockets for 11th in the league in free throw attempts. The Knicks go to the line. That's what they do. So do the Rockets. But the Rockets got 33 free throw attempts. The Knicks got 12. That's a huge disparity that is hard to explain when you are a team that's getting into the paint and scoring. It's one thing if the Knicks took 43s and just weren't going to the paint. They were in the paint. They were battling in the paint. They could not get a call. They were frustrated all night about it. And the fact that the game ends on a call like that just makes it even more frustrating because of how hard they had to battle back and they had to get a call like that to finish it off. So, yes, the Knicks are going to be angry about this, and there's no doubt about it. The whistle wasn't the wrong whistle. It was the right call, but did it need to be called is the question. And Tom Thibodeau, by the way, at the end of the first half got yes. technical. Right. So, to your Which point, is rare. it was a repeated night. Yes. First technical of the year for the Knicks, Coach. A repeated night in terms of frustration. Wally Zerbiak helped call the game to die. With Mike Breen, Wally, tell us, what do you think about that foul call? Terrible call. Absolutely terrible call. And I, 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 listen, NBA officials, they make the right call at the right time no matter what the case is in the game. There was not contact to be whistled on a foul there. It was a 35-foot shot. Jalen Brunson went up straight. He tried to contest the call. There was marginal contact, if any. I didn't really see much contact because Holiday was moving to his side. That is a really tough way to lose this basketball game. And it started from the beginning of the game with the Taj Gibson overrule. The Knicks lost their challenge on that. That call. Taj Gibson was standing there. He got bowled over by Jabari Smith, and that's kind of when the game and the officials started to get under the Knicks' skin. They uh, they didn't have control of this game most of the night, and that is just a brutal, brutal loss. It was a valiant effort the way they came back. Jalen Brunson does not get the respect he deserves from the officials. You know, it's funny you say it that way because that's where I was going to go. It's Jalen Brunson. He's an all-star, right? Like you're talking about a player that has earned that in the NBA. And while you know this yourself as a player in the league and as a guy who was an all-star, when you get to a certain status, you start to get calls. And Jalen Brunson, once again in this game, was getting very frustrated with a lot of physical defense against him and a lot of times that he was knocked to the ground and wasn't getting that whistle. It wasn't like he was taking threes and fadeaways. He kept going into the teeth of defense. And that's, I think, where the Knicks were really frustrated is that they were trying to draw contact. They were trying to play physical. And it was as if they could not get the same whistles that Houston was getting in this game. And it's hard to explain. It is, because the Knicks drive to the basket hard. 
and 33 uh, free throws by the Houston Rockets and only 12 by the Knicks. And another call that really stands out, Dylan Brooks was all over Jalen Brunson yes. the whole entire game. The officials have to clean that up. That time where Dylan Brooks lowered his shoulder, completely just mowed over Jalen Brunson, and Jalen Brunson gets called for the defensive foul, that was the type of play yeah. that the officials, it's borderline, I mean, that was not a soft little lean-in trying to get space. That was leaning in, lowering your shoulder, and Dylan Brooks is a physical intimidator and type player, but he did that to try to intimidate and send a message to Jalen Brunson that I'm going to hit you with a little more force and try to make you feel uncomfortable the whole entire game, whether it was 94 feet from the basket, dribbling up the floor, trying to deny him the, the, the ball the whole entire time. This was a playoff type atmosphere game. That's what the Houston Rockets want to do. Ime Udoka wants his team not to back down. He wants to teach his young team to play physical, to be the aggressors, to put the other team on their heels. And the officials, at times, they couldn't blow all the whistles. There were so many fouls mm -hmm. that they were committing that they said, all right, we can't blow that one. We, we'll, we'll be blowing the whistle every single possession. And for the Knicks to go down like that, I've never seen Tom Thibodeau like that. Rick Brunson was irate at mm -hmm. the end of the game. That was a really tough call. Yeah, and, and, and when you look at it from an overall perspective, right, for this performance, that was a really rough start to this game, especially for Jalen Brunson and the Knicks. They, they were climbing uphill pretty much this whole game because they really struggled with their offense, Wally. Yeah, they did, and that's going to happen when you're making midseason trades and you're dealing with three starters out of the lineup. But the will is there with this team. This team plays with such passion and such will. Josh Hart steps up and makes huge threes in the fourth quarter to match those threes made by Dylan Brooks. He was knocking down shots all over the place in that fourth quarter. I just love the resolve of this team. And for that basketball game to be played at such a high level in the fourth quarter, down the stretch, electrifying shots, shots on both sides both sides just not backing down and then for an official to make the call like that which was the wrong call I understand if it's the right call make the call when you're fouled on a three-point shot make the make the call uh, if Shengun was driving into the basket and he got hit going to the basket but in that case that is not the right call to make especially exacerbated at the time when it was made with 0.3 seconds on the clock all right Wally good stuff as always have a great trip to Orlando we'll talk to you on Wednesday night you got it, boys. It's too bad because it overshadows, as we've been talking about, a tremendous effort by this team. Yep. Shorthanded, down by 14, as we mentioned, at the half. They fight back in the third quarter. They tie it. They were able to tie it in the fourth quarter, but they were never able to take the lead in the second half. Yeah, and that was the struggle. And every time, you know, this is a Rockets team that have lost four in a row on the road. They come home where they play their best. They're way better at home than they are on the road, and they just made every play and every shot. And how about Aaron Holiday right here with the jam? And that got a little flex action. That got him going, and he just started making a bunch of shots early on in the fourth quarter, and the Rockets were able to retake a big lead. You see him knock down that three there as well. He just had his own personal run, and he just could get anywhere he wanted to, and the Knicks had trouble stopping him. And all of a sudden, you just turn around, and the Knicks were down nine again all of a sudden. But the defense continued. Look at Dante DiVincenzo. He on defense had a great game, and there's Bogdanovich running the floor and getting the finish. And all of a sudden, it was Boyan who got himself going offensively as he was getting a couple of shots up. But Dylan Brooks, I mean, it was like who was going to be hot next? Dylan Brooks making three after three in front of the Knicks bench, letting them hear about it, facing them up. He had four threes in the fourth quarter. But Jalen Brunson wasn't going to be stopped. Takes it to the rack and scores. And the Knicks get themselves back within two. And now they have a chance to tie it. And there's eight seconds, 12 seconds, 10 seconds at 8.7. Tick, 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 Bill Pito. Knocks down the fadeaway. It's amazing the fadeaway. how he creates a space oh, with the step back. Player. Now here's the last shot. Here's the play. A chuck and duck. And somehow we decide a good idea here is to blow the whistle rather than this great game that these two teams are just going back and forth. Maybe we should just take this into overtime and let the players settle it. No, a whistle is blown to the advantage of the Rockets. And they make two of the free throws to win the game. Again, we're being repetitive, but look at the free throws. Two teams on the same court playing the same game. You got 12 free throw attempts for the Knicks. And both and were going the to the basket. It's not as if one team was shooting a bunch of threes. Both teams were playing physical and going to the basket. Somehow, some way, there's that big of a disparity. That's confusing. It'll be interesting to see the last two-minute report tomorrow at 5 p.m. All right, so Brunson, 20 of his 27 in the second half. 
Bogdanovich was huge in the fourth quarter, Alan. Nine of his 15 in the fourth quarter. You mentioned Aaron Holiday. Huge for Houston with 11 fourth quarter points. He averages like seven points a game. He finished tonight with 18. Yeah, and, and again, it's just like it seemed to be in that fourth quarter. Who got hot? You know, for a little, it was a pocket of the game. A pocket of the game a little bit was Holiday, as we just showed you. Bogdanovich really got it going, which was good to see. And then after that, it was Dylan Brooks. It was just back and forth up until the very end. And I just I, honestly, I just can't get over being an official and thinking. You know, I mean, you feel the game as an official. You feel it, and thinking to yourself, "I'm blowing that whistle." When you see the arm up and the arm down, I'm sticking to this. All right, let's, be, let's say there's five minutes it, left in the first quarter. You making that foul call? Well, first of all, you're not taking that shot. Right. He's not right. taking a chuck and duck fadeaway right. because there's no reason to. Right. But it's it's uh, you can watch it and you can see contact. So if you want to protect the official, you'll show that Jalen Brunson has an arm low and he does touch the body. But you'll also look and see that Holiday has an arm up and he's pushing off Brunson coming at him. Right. So that's just one of those, let's get to overtime, boys. Like, that's what that is. I've been watching this game for, for half my life, right? I've been covering it for more than half, almost half my life. They just, just, the veterans don't call that, and they called it in that situation. So technically tomorrow, it'll be, it was the correct call. Technically, that's what they'll say tomorrow, correct call. But we all know a certain feel that's aspect. not the call There's you made. There's a feel aspect to yes. calling a game, right? Yes, you just don't. You go to overtime with that game because it was going too well to let the players decide it. Don't let it be decided on a chuck and duck three with one-tenth of a second left. All right, so the Knicks have one game left before the also break. Wednesday at Orlando, they're now 4-4 four and four without OG Ananobi and Julius Randle.